Except of it, have you ever struggled with the subject and asked someone, but can you please, please help me with this subject? Then they respond, Ngoguti, past papers, past papers, past papers. And maybe you've tried out past papers, but you don't know how to really go about practicing past papers in a very effective way that will be helpful for you to improve your marks in that subject. If that is you, then you're on the right video. Guys, my name is Damdiz. Today I'm going to be talking to you about the etiquette of how to go about practicing past papers effectively. You don't just jump into this thing, but there's a way in which you can do it effectively, man. Who am I? Why am I qualified to give you this advice? As you know, but I got seven distinctions, not just for my final results, but throughout the year, commentary for all terms. How did I go about that? I went about that by practicing past papers effectively. And today I'm going to teach you how that goes. Asking in a call. First of all, Buffett, we need to figure out Guti, where do we get these past papers? And I know some of you get past papers physically from your teacher, ne? but I think it is important to also know but where can I get them digital? Young to me now when I was in high school, fine, I used physical, but digital was my go-to because of the variety of past papers I had access to ne? whenever I wanted to practice. I always knew, but when I found it online, it would always be a past paper and its memo. And sometimes past papers that we receive physically do not have a memo, which is a red flag. What is important is that you can go to your internet cafe or even on your phone or your computer or whatever you have access to. What in your Google? What past papers, maybe grade 12, NSC. That's what you're doing most, ne? Can you caps or whatever? Then, what it shows you is the link. First link was going to eat it, Department of Basic Education. That is a government saying to you, these are the past papers, these are the answers I'm done to your questions. First link, you enter there and you'll see a long list of past papers that is downloadable. So after that, you look for the past paper or the subject or whatever that you're looking for, then you can click on that link. It's very simple, Buffett. If you have troubles, just let me know in the comment section, then I'll answer accordingly. Number two, get my is to understand what kind of past papers are available. In past papers, as core, for example, they broken up into subjects. Of course, now all subjects in the high school have past papers, and it is important to practice them. Even the LO buffet, you need to practice those past papers. So you have subjects, then you have years, about 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020. Each of those years have terms. March, June, uh, trials, then the final exam. Young tall. Then there are provinces. You see, there are past papers specifically for the Eastern Cape, for Limpopo, for Western Cape, for KZN, and so forth and so forth. So you need to know, Ugoti, which trend am I going to go by? Am I going to go by years? Am I going to go by terms? Am I going to go by provinces? Ne? And I've heard rumors, and I used to believe the rumors when I was in high school, that certain provinces have stronger past papers than certain provinces. Ne? And even on top of this, they even break it down according to the curriculum that you're using. For example, there are past papers for IEB, there are past papers for CAPS. So now you need to understand Gabe, which one I'm using. In your development, this can be used to your benefit. But we'll talk about that. Let's continue. So now, Gabba Fit, I'm introducing you to the etiquette now. There are rules that you need to respect when you're doing past papers. Look, let me be honest with you. When I was in high school, I did not necessarily know them as rules. But it was just things that I used to do that just made sense. But I'm going to share them to you as rules because, I mean, it only makes sense if I do so. So number one, Buffett, I need to choose an environment that allows me to practice these past papers. A suitable environment for study. An environment that lacks distractions. Yeah. Sometimes you're the problem as well when I'm not focused. You need to focus, Buffett. Choose an environment that's not going to distract you. For example, if you know your friends are so serious, when I want to do past papers in front of them, they're going to disturb you most much like FIFA. What are you gonna do? You're gonna go play FIFA. You get me? If you're at home and the children are making noise or whatever, you're being sent around by your parents, that means that being at home is not a suitable place. Can't I stay longer in school just to practice these past papers? You get me? Choose an environment that is suitable. Another rule, Buffett, is that we never, ever practice a past paper without a confirmed memo. Otherwise, you are eating and drinking poison. 
Ngo, but there's no true way of confirming what this is the true answer. Yeah, but you don't want to do that. Yeah, but unless you're going to go ask your teacher, can we please do this? Ah, too much complication. Never, ever. Even if someone comes to you and be like, let's just try out this past paper. I heard it's really nice. What did that? Ask, does it have a memo? If not, then no. Yeah, but so a memo is important to ensure that you get your answers. Yeah, but a memo is important to show you the possible ways of getting to that answer. A memo is important in ensuring that you know the mark allocation for each answer. Ne? What is important to include in the steps for me to reach the answer? So, my favorite memo is critical. You can't do a past paper without a memo. I think I've overemphasized that enough. Ne? Okay, you don't go about doing a past paper without a memo. Always ensure. And on the website that I just spoke to you guys about, there is a what? A memo there. There's a past paper and a memo and a past paper and a memo. So download the past paper and download the memo as well. Another rule, Buffett, is to always have an approach of how I'm going to go about it and record keeping. No, good. I've covered this past paper. I've covered that past paper. I've covered this past paper. I've covered this. Maybe in this past paper, I've covered it, but I only did question ban ban and ban ban. Have excellent record keeping. That allows you not to repeat easy, you know, thinking that you're learning and you're just cramming. Ne? So have a record keeping a straightforward. So an approach um, zegelo, that you can use is go by years. Ne? Be like, okay, I'm going to choose the final pass paper of each year. Ne? Final terms in 2017, final pass paper, yellow subject. 2018, final pass paper, yellow subject. 20, what, what, njalonja. Ne? What that helps you do is that you don't be like, okay, I'm doing now 2018, but I'm going to first do this, this term, and I'm going to do that term, then I'm going to do 2020. Have I covered 2020? Have I covered 2019? Eh, I'm not sure. This past paper looks familiar. Did I cover it before? Ah, let me just redo it again. I mean, it was easy. Was it easy or did you do it previously? It's so much confusion that is unnecessary. Good record keeping, my fate, and choosing a proper approach. I am still going to tell you, Gabafi, to my experienced expertise of how I went about it. Might work for you, might not, but I'm still going to let you know. But before that, let's talk about when you are practicing. Ne? What is critical, Gabafi, is to understand that use practicing past paper to your advantage for uh, the exam. What does that mean? It means that create or simulate exam conditions when you're practicing. Ne? You know, in an exam, you don't just write to all oh, look, take your value. You always have a time limit. Why don't you have a timer for yourself while you're practicing to see how much time it takes you to complete a certain amount of questions? It makes sense, right? That is why now that environment is important. But it is the quiet environment. It mimics the exam conditions. What this is helpful for as well is that during exams, normally people have anxiety because they're not used to the exam conditions. And when I feel constantly practicing under time pressure, and under quiet environments, your mind knows the exam mode. Once you pass paper, exam mode, you go about it, cover, cover, cover. That's all it takes. So I know that my explanations are good. I know that for sure. But <laughs> you guys believe with examples. Let me make an example of how I go about the calculation. What you do is that you think maybe maths, for example, paper one. Paper one, how many marks are there in total? 150. Okay. Then how much time am I allowed for this 150 marks? Three hours. How many minutes are there in three hours? In each hour, there's 60 minutes. So 60, uh, 120, 180. So I have 180 minutes to spend in this three hours. Then you think to yourself, all right, then how do I get the amount of minutes I need to spend per mark? Then I'm going to be like 180 divided by 150, which is equal to what? 1.2. It means that I have 1.2 minutes for each mark, 150. So it means that if now I am doing a question that has about 10 marks, I cannot spend more than 12 minutes because 10 times 1.2 is 12. And if I'm being honest with you guys, these are ideal calculations for ideal situations. I'm, and I'm under exam conditions. There's no ideal situation there. Then how do we adapt this calculation to work in real life? You go about it by thinking about time in the exam as money in the real world. For example, 
money you're always trying to save money save money in the exam you're trying to save time save time and already by practicing past papers you increase the speed of thought so that you encounter questions that you've encountered in the past and you don't spend a lot of time you bank that time for the questions that you've never encountered or the questions that, that have higher marks and require more thinking you get me where i'm going with this so what that means is that if you come across a question that is five marks and you know that you have to spend six minutes on that question now that doesn't really make sense right you're gonna fight very hard and you're probably gonna spend more time but because when in the other questions that required you to spend 1.2 minutes you were spending 20 seconds i'm an i'm an i'm an i'm an You've banked enough time <laughs> to spend on this question because when you've banked enough time in the other questions as well, that means that you have enough time when you're done with the exam to go back and look at other questions that were difficult and redo other sums that you're not sure about and just check your work. Is this the quality that I want to submit? How are you going to go about that if you're not aware of your time, if you're not aware of your marks, if you're not trying to save time along the questions? Do you guys see where I'm going with this? So where are we now, Buffett? You've decided on the past paper, you've decided on the subject, you've decided on the order in which you're going to do. You've decided, Ugoti, this is the record keeping that I'm going to use to ensure that I'm always in check. Yes, Ugoti, where I am, what have I done, what have I not done? You've calculated all the time and the marks and the what what. you found a nice environment and you are ready. So now, that's where you are. But I'm going to share with you some tips and tricks to help you improve even better by the clear etiquette that I'm teaching you. Because I like you like that. So, another thing, Yeba Fit. A day must not end without you doing a past paper. If a day ends, any day, be it a weekend, be it a weekday, if a day ends without you doing a past paper, there is something fundamentally wrong that you're doing. Any subject, any past paper, a day must not end without you doing a past paper. Formally, According to this plan that we've created together. Yeah, bon? So you need to do a past paper. To have a roster about doing past papers. Ne? You're good, I'm going to do this past paper for this long. I'm going to do that past paper for that long. I'm going to do some past papers for that subject. Past paper for that. Have a roster. Do past papers for all your subjects, including LO. Including consumer. Including agriculture. Including a subject that you feel absolutely confident. You've been getting hundreds in that subject. Do past papers. Another thing about Fedor that I found quite useful, especially when I'm trying to master a specific topic in a subject. Let's say, for example, in mathematics, go paper one, la one of the first two questions. Question one, question two, I'm trying to master that. What I'm going to do when I'm practicing past papers is that I'm going to choose, okay, I'm going to do 2017, final, 2018, 2019, 2020. These four, yeah? What I'm going to do is that I'm going to do Question one, question two, good twenty seventeen. Question one, question two, good twenty eighteen. Question one, question two, good twenty nineteen. Question one, question two, good twenty twenty. It allows me to improve specifically in that topic, especially if I just did the topic and I want to see how well I understand it. That's what I'm gonna do. So now you're gonna do your calculations, give a fair to before you start. You're helping or what? Question one and question two. In total, they are about twenty marks. So it means that I need to spend about. Let's say 24 minutes to complete this. I'm going to try to do 2017. Then I'm going to record my time. If I spend 30 minutes instead of 24 minutes, I'm not going to panic. I'm going to record it down. I try with 2018. If I spend there 28 minutes instead of 24 minutes, I'm not going to panic. I'm going to write down, okay, there's an improvement. All right. Next one. If I try 2019 and I realize by him, man, I've spent 26 minutes instead of 24. I'm like... Yeah, man, my trend is looking good. I'm going down. If I try 2020 and I realize that I've spent 23 minutes instead of 24, I celebrate because I have saved one minute. Do you get now the benefit of this? And you've mastered the topic in the process. This kind of also applies for your marks as well. Because, I mean, if I do 2017 question one and question two, then I record, Ugoti, out of 20 marks, I got 18. Then you're like, damn, what happened to the two? Then you figure out in the, in the memo, Ugoti, what went wrong? Then you understand, but, oh, hey, I made a mistake. I need to focus. Oh, the wrong formula, ah, wrong calculation. Oh, actually, I don't understand this at all. Then you can call a friend or you can go speak to your teacher about it. As long as you can try and improve so that when you do the next past paper, 
you are quite clear and now you can go back in your subjects we have bionotic we met i've mastered exponents i've mastered factorization i've mastered algebra i've mastered this fully because you have evidence you're good i did about five to six past papers doing algebra alone and i am confident because i've been getting full marks now but when you see why record keeping is so important so that you know what you know and you know what you don't know and you know what you still need to know imagine if you're a student in the position where you don't know what you know you don't know what you don't know guys that is a very painful position to be record keeping is key for this thing another secret that they don't tell you buffett is that about 80 percent of whatever paper you're writing in your final exam it has came out somewhere somehow in the past and it's somewhere in some past paper literally when i was writing when i was in metric i literally was cruising to some point because i was like i'm an similar i've seen this before this is easy ah this is that ah this is that because this concept has been asked in one way or form in the past. And if you do not practice past papers, you are depriving yourself of that. It's like, guys, sing a cheat code. And when you're like, no, I'm not going to use a cheat code. I'm just going to use the textbook. No, I'm not ready to use a past paper. No, I have to complete this topic first before I do a past paper. All oh, those are myths, man. Those are myths, Buffet. Don't listen to those things. Listen to us. Tinabad man experience. Go do a past paper. Do it even if you're not confident. Do it even if you're scared. Do it even if it's destroying your confidence while you're doing because you don't know most of the stuff. Go learn, come back and keep fighting. Past papers are literally your answer to all the questions that you have. I give a fair to dump this your pale up on TikTok. God, okay, if you enjoyed the video and you still want more, comment there for those who don't finish these videos. Ut another one, Tam Diesel. And Tam Diesel will know what to do. And again, Gabafed, please don't forget to subscribe, to like, to share this video so that it reaches a lot more people so that they can benefit as well. Remember, Moto to eat we climb the ladder. We we'll leave it there for someone else. Follow me on TikTok, Buffet. I'm also there sharing my personal journey each and every day. Young bonus, but how is life doing medicine at GCT? Being fifth year and all, and being postgrad and all. But otherwise, guys, damn, this is a good end course. Damn, God.